The moon is the same size and distance as the sun and follows close to the sun's path, the ecliptic. The moon takes about 24 hours and 51 minutes to complete a revolution above us, slower than the sun. The moon is always close to the ecliptic, within 5 degrees above or below. It also comes and goes, just like we saw with the sun. The moon crosses the sun's ecliptic approximately every two weeks. These crossings are known as lunar nodes. If it crosses the ecliptic at full moon, we have a lunar eclipse. If it crosses the ecliptic at new moon, we have a solar eclipse. Remember this for later. The moon takes an average of 29 days, 12 hours and 44 minutes to go through one lunar month, one lunar cycle. From new moon, through waxing, full, waning, back to new moon. Because of this motion, the moon has a point in time each lunar month when it is closest to the Earth, perigee, and a point in time where it is farthest from the Earth, apogee. The sun moves faster than the moon. The sun catches up with it, creating a new moon, and then speeds ahead of it. More accurately here, we can see the lunar phases are caused by the relative geometry of the moon to the sun in the flat earth sky. These two luminaries are linked by what one could call pranic, magnetic electro or chi energy. The first quarter moon is when it is half illuminated and occurs when the sun and moon are 90 degrees apart in the sky. At full moon, the moon is fully powered and fully illuminated when the sun and moon are 180 degrees apart in the sky. The moon self-luminates and self-deluminates. It powers up and powers down. There is evidence to suggest this geometric relationship creates the tides in the oceans too, as salt water is ionized and can react to magnetic electro. Another way of talking about the motion of these luminaries is to say the moon travels 14.5 degrees an hour and the sun 15 degrees an hour. So the moon loses 12 degrees a day on the sun. People are okay that the sun is self-luminating, so people should also be okay that the moon is self-luminating too. A nice way to remember if the moon is waxing or waning is if it is like a letter C or D. A cat goes, waning, and a dog comes, waxing. These phases can be known far into the future due to the sun and moon's constant speeds. This works as a geometric clockwork, a calendar in the sky so to speak. Chinese, Thai, Hindu, Islam and Hebrew calendars still today are linked to the moon cycles, the lunar month. If one photographs the moon 51 minutes later on successive days, note due to the moon rising about 51 minutes later each day, over one lunar month it will trace out its own analema. The moon can be seen above in the sky at the same time in distant places. Depending on where one is on a line of longitude depends on what degree of rotation the moon will be. To a stationary observer the moon also appears to rotate as it moves from east to west in the sky. This is only due to perspective the moon is not actually rotating. It will appear to rotate one way until it is above one's head and then the other way. Regardless of location, every human on earth has only ever seen one face of the moon. Therefore it is rational that it appears to many human subconscious and conscious mind as spherical. In a waning phase, the closer the sun gets to the moon, the more power or self-illumination the moon loses. And when the sun is very close to the moon, it loses its power, it loses its self-illumination. The moon disappears. Some say we should really see a black silhouette. We don't though, we see nothing and can pick up nothing with cameras or telescopes. It's just not there. This new moon really could be just that, a brand new moon. And we will layer up on this information later. Then a few days after new moon, at the waxing crescent phase, one can see the slither become illuminated and the moon starts gaining its power again. 
Even at other times during the lunar cycle, we can very rarely see something appear to go through the moon. And in this footage, it is unknown if this is a star, wandering star, or high altitude drone. At other times, the moon appears as though the blue sky is coming through the moon. But the moon is higher than the layer of blue sky. So is the moon semi-transparent here? Is the moon not totally there in these instances? When the moon is half illuminated, is the other half there or not? Again, the Luminaries Mysterium has not given us a clear and rational answer as yet. We don't know. We have to continue to revel in the mystery. We don't know what the moon is. We don't know what craters are. In truth they are just different shades of light and dark. Worth noting though, that in the electric universe community, laboratory experiments using electric arcs by plasma physicist CJ Ransom created craters. Is the mainstream story for the 22 degree halos another wild myth? It's almost as if the moon and sun are piercing into this reality, or piercing into a layer in our sky. Both look like spheres to our subconscious, but simply this cannot be so. The moon gives us energy for sure, but whether it is a projection, an actual object, or even an old malfunctioning sun, we don't know. The word eclipse comes from a Greek word meaning abandonment. Quite literally, an eclipse was seen as the sun on a solar eclipse and moon on a lunar eclipse abandoning Earth. The lunar eclipse is only possible exactly on a full moon, when the sun and moon are directly opposite, and also when the moon is at the crossing point of the ecliptic, at the lunar node, when h1 and h2 in the image are at the same altitude. This is all akin to a super tight and accurate astrological aspect of opposition. Any solar year has a minimum of four eclipses, two solar and two lunar. And it is possible to have up to six or seven eclipses in a single solar year. The moon is full, fully charged, and then it loses power. Preparing energy, retracting, then it sparks, surges, pulses. The moon becomes reddish as it continues its potent energetic link with the sun. A pranic or magnetic electro handshake with the sun. Blinking, flickering. It seems to be a reset of sorts, or more wildly, a malfunction or false kickstart of an old sun trying to recharge itself and then it regains power. The lunar eclipses are seen where it is night time, and over a massive land space with the same intensity. They last for a few hours, much longer than the minutes of a solar eclipse. The change in colour during a lunar eclipse is seen simultaneously by people in different continents, and because of this, the obstruction theory from old Vedic myth is impossible. The theory that it is obstructed by another celestial body, such as Rahu, Ketu, Shadow Planet, Mount Maru, Black Sun or Lilith, is easily debunked, as it would only be visible in a small location. You see, with this lunar eclipse, any obstructing body would be huge, many times bigger than the moon, 